With 50 plus years of combined produce, supply chain, entrepreneurial, and business experience, Craig Slade and Ed Bertad discuss the impacts of fresh produce on their lives and health. This podcast is a casual conversation between two friends just trying to get better. This is The Fresh Cred. Hey, that's something I've changed since we've last talked. You know, I don't want to know. If you quit drinking coffee... What? I don't, so I quit, not, I quit drinking world, caffeinated. This is not a world I want to live in. My new, my new program, and I've been on this now. This is going on probably two weeks, and it's really not been a big deal. It's, it's been amazingly simple. Um, so I, I get up, I, I make like a, like a one pod of caffeinated coffee, and then I make a pod of straight up decaf. And that's all I drink the rest of the day is decaf. One cup of caffeinated. I, you know, and I can't decide if I want to get rid of the, the first cup of caffeine and just get rid of it all together or, <laughs> you know, keep going. So, but honestly, it's been, I, I can't, you know, but that's kind of a little disappointing. You know, what I'm trying to do, going back to what we've talked about a million times, it's all about trying to get better sleep. And, um, <laughs> you know, I sleep. I don't know how many damn hours do you need in a freaking night to, to be rested? A hundred? I can tell you like six isn't enough because that's, uh, that's what I usually get. So I have increased. I mean, I'm out of my mind. I was like, you know what? I'm done. If I don't get rested. So I've literally, I was looking at my, my sleep record. And according to my, my, my watch or whatever, I'm getting close to an average of seven hours. Six and a half seven and buddy if that's not enough i'm sorry i'm already pissed that i have to sleep that many hours as it is you know my original strategy up until listening that damn street sleep doctor was to sleep I, I was trying to figure out how to get as few hours like how could i make four hours enough right you know that to me that's something you want to you know we talked about i was going to create that freaking sleep pod where you're like in a coffin kind of deal floating and we talked mm-hmm. about that in early episodes that was my whole deal is how do i create like a, an environment where i can sleep four or five hours and that's it right how can i cre- you know make damn like a cryo chamber a like a bari- yeah what's it barometric chamber something like um out of that show boba fat we got you a multiplier bobo bobo fat <laughs> boba fat uh, yeah, I'm sh- you ha- you're not going to watch that. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> what, who would watch a show? What the hell is uh, the probably that? at least 18 of the 20 folks listening to us probably watched it. <laughs> Mason, have you seen Bobo Fat? I, I'm not a big Star Wars guy, so no. Um, the Mandalorian, that's what the, the show is called. But um, no, I don't I don't watch it. I haven't watched it. The Mandalorian. So they they crossed a man with a freaking car, <laughs> basically. That's, that's that's really the premise. I don't think you need to watch it. Yeah, <laughs> I, th- I think not. But with Bobo Fat and a man I haven't watched Obi Wan yet. DeLorean. But... You know the guy that was you know he was he was uh, the Delorean guy. He was using that as his front for his cocaine program. That's how he freaking the car? washed his money. Huh. Yeah, the uh, Delorean guy. I'm pretty sure he was a cocaine dealer or. He certainly, I think, was a user. But, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure his DeLorean program was a great way to... That's why it didn't pan out also. I guess it wasn't. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Interesting. Hey, but here's my... Can I, can I tell you about one show that I am watching that I think you might like? Before you do that, I got to make oh, a freaking God. wild-ass prediction. Can I Can I just say this? All right? Because I know... What, Mason's DeLorean's going to go out of business? No, Tesla. Oh, yeah. Tesla. So if you, if. If you have, so mark this down, Mason, whatever episode, whatever date this is, if you have the capabilities of shorting Tesla and it's up this week, it's about what? 720, 750. Uh, it's been as high as over a thousand in the last three or four months. Last time they had an earnings call, but I'm telling you, Big short opportunity, big short. This, this is, but the bad news is, is when Tesla goes, 
the world's going to go. But yeah, I think Tesla may be another Enron, guys. I don't know if y'all know Enron. It's a energy company. Yeah, it's a great movie too, by the way. If you haven't seen that, Enron's a good one. I was in the process of moving to Houston when the trial was going on. And I remember being in Houston for a visit, kind of a pre-move visit, and sitting in my hotel room and watching um, the trial. So Kenneth Lay. Yeah. Kenneth Lay was the CEO of Enron. I spooled up on um, on Enron real quick. You spooled up on it? Yeah, I just learned about it quick. Yeah. So have you seen have you seen the I guess documentary? Ed, have you seen it? Uh, no, I haven't. Oh my gosh, dude, put that on your list. That's freaking it's crazy. Crazy how it all came together, crazy all the but I mean in that time you gotta realize, I mean, we had we had Enron back in the back when the dot com bust and all that took place. So much stuff went down. But you had WorldCom, which is a big fraud. You had Enron. Um God, there was another one that was a big old fraud that came out. So, yeah, you got to be careful. I mean, that's the thing, you know, like I say, and I, I think Tesla, Tesla, man. And I think, you know, as much as I think um, Elon has done so much in terms of space travel, if you really care about that, he's, he's certainly put that on that. There would not be this passion and this drive for electrification of cars if it wasn't for old Elon. But I think maybe Elon's gotten out over his skis. That's just my take. Elon believe maybe he's a little more, I don't know. Well, that's for sure. Right. <sighs> Crypto, baby. Woo, crypto winner. Do you got your Mason? Are you still a crypto man? <laughs> Ed, you st well, I just asking if Ed is still holding his. No. You you sold you sold I was on the sidelines. And rightfully so. <laughs> I am enjoying Yeah, I'm enjoying my um I'm enjoying my, I told you so. You're enjoying your freaking CDs. Your freaking um, half a percent saving. You still got your money in a savings account. All right. <laughs> like, a freaking cave, like a freaking caveman. Um, <laughs> I, one thing on, on Tesla real quick before we move forward. So I was yeah. watching a couple of videos of, I don't know if the guy bought the car or was test driving or whatever, but he was, the tag on on this Instagram post was 155 thousand for this piece of junk or something like that, and he's in the interior and he's you know got his camera on and his audio. He's I guess kind of pointing out how he felt, how poorly designed and and quality level that the interior had, and he was like closing the cup holder and like pushing against the dash and the and everything was a squeak in and making a bunch of noise. And it seemed like he felt like a lot of the interior um, molding and padding and all that stuff was too thin. And it was pretty interesting to see, like it, it didn't look that it didn't look like a, that, you know, like a, like a, a well-made car. car. Yeah. Well-made. You, you know, and here's the weird deal because it's like, this is one thing I've, and, and I've been, I, I've been a Tesla from the early days, man, it's been like, I don't know, I've had this uh, Tesla Envy, right? You know, it's it's priced at a, at a place that I didn't think I'd ever go. I don't know. I've got, I mean, I guess with inflation and everything, maybe it doesn't seem as bad as it once did. I mean, hell, Ed's trucks are as much as a damn Tesla. So, I mean, I kind of had to wrap my mind around the fact that maybe they're not that bad. But anyway, people that own Teslas. I've never met anybody that didn't love the damn car. The only people that I ever heard that didn't like the car were people that didn't own them. Now, obviously, this guy owned one and was making a show about it. But that all being said, I, I don't know if you guys know, but I am on. So this is a car you need to check out if you're not familiar with it. Check out the Fisker. 
F I S K E R. Um, so I'm on the waiting list. So I, I signed up for this back, uh, oh, probably a year and a half ago, something like that. I got on the list for the Fisker. So this is, this car is like the seats are made out of freaking recycled plastic bottles. It's going to have a, a, a solar sunroof on the top. Um, it is all electric. It is a badass looking ride. Um, Henry Fisk, Hink, Hinkley, Hinkley, Hinkley Fisker. Um, Hinkley is the designer. He's a famous designer. He designed a couple of James Bond cars. He used to work for BMW. He actually originally was with Tesla at one time. I mean, this guy's been around. I'm telling you right now, check out this company. Check out these freaking cars. Um, yeah, so inflation is running rampant. I mean, has so question one, has it affected the Bertad household? Have you quit driving your freaking gas guzzling one ton double throw down diesel truck? Um so I drive a half ton now. So it's kind of like in in Texas the equivalent of a minivan. Okay, you aren't supposed to admit. Okay, Ed, we built you up to be like this big cowboy <laughs> hunter guy. You're not supposed to tell. <laughs> a little baby not, truck. No, I, didn't intend, I didn't tell you. But yeah. I, I filled you up me, oh, the other day. Hey, I really so, took I gotta, Do you remember the white? Do you remember that old white three quarter ton you used to have when mm-hmm. I first met you? I don't try to remember which one it was, but I've had well, a lot of been, white ones. It, yeah, well, it would have been 2006, 2007, 2006, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, I do. I think that one was uh, manual transmission. It was. That that truck, to me, that is Edward Todd. That is the <laughs> Edward Todd that I first met. That is the Edward Todd. I, still, I have a hard time wrapping my mind around the Edward Todd that is today because you, you were stick shift, freaking cigar smoking, Copenhagen chewing. Whoo, man. Yeah, I love that truck. You are you you were a cat. So anyway, go say, on. So say you what you up. will about those vehicles though, particularly super duty, heavy duty diesel vehicles. They last a long time. All they right. Do. So the last one I had I bought in 2012. It's got two hundred thousand plus miles on it. Um Bryce is driving it back and forth to West Texas and it runs Almost like the day I drove it off the lot. Really? In other words, they last a long time. I mean, um, yeah, they do. If you take care Fair of them, enough. they last a long time. I think a dealership sent me a letter the other day. They wanted to give me twenty two thousand dollars for it. Ten years old. What? Um, so residual value is there. They're expensive vehicles, but um, yeah, whether that's you know a, a ploy to get you in the dealership or not, I'm not sure, but. You know, given the current circumstances with vehicles and availability. Anyway, um, inflation. We, you bought gas. You were bought $134 gas. Hundred thirty four dollars to fill you're, up. You're little, now baby truck. You've yeah, changed. You wear one hundred thirty four dollars to fill it up. Um, yeah, definitely taking notice every time I fuel up. So, how has it affected us? Well. Have you guys quit going? Have you changed anything about your life with all this inflation and around there? I mean, definitely think about purchases more. Um, I pulled up some inflation calculations. Um, I mean, just from, you know, 2019 till now, 14% in what, four years? That's pretty significant. Yeah. Going back to 2000, we're at 70% cumulative rate of inflation overall. Yeah. And which I, I mean, think is the yeah. most impactful, right? I don't, I don't feel like 2000 was that long ago. Do you remember what you made back then? I remember what I made in 2000. Do you really? Mm-hmm. Smoke. I have a good job. memory. I'm not as old as you are. Yeah, that's true. Good point. So, wow. But yeah, yeah so definitely. Yeah, 2000, I mean, but, but, thinking but yeah, more about it and, when I put stuff down, like I, I think I said this before. I mean, I feel pretty fortunate that, you know, at least if I go to the grocery store, I can pretty much buy what I want to buy. 
And right. when I put stuff back <laughs> because of the price, um, that's I think saying something. Uh, I'm not sure. So I'm sure what have you put long. back? What have you What have you put back? That's what I want to know. Was it Was it cherries at nine ninety nine a thing? Was it? No, I bought the cherries. I got you scolded the for it when I got home, but I bought cherries. Love Good cherries. Kelly. Ready to go, Cali. Get on yeah. his ass, because California bean cherries. You know, oh my god. Well, I, were they nine ninety nine, twelve ninety nine? What was the price? What'd you pay for those bad boys? You remember? I don't, I don't remember, remember what the price per pound was, but I think it was. You're so of, far out of freaking no, Karen. You don't. Even, good God. No, I mean it was. Todd. They were north of the guy that hauled cattle that I know used to freaking <laughs> worry about how much beef jerky was when he stopped at the freaking. They were north pits, of twelve pilot. Huh. I, I don't remember what the price per pound was, but I think that the the full se- the retail was like twelve something. Jeez, yeah. it's 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 ten to twelve. It's something crazy. But anyway, continue. What have They're you put good, back? Though. You put something back. You put something back. Um, I, I I love nuts, so I eat a lot of nuts, pecans, walnuts, macadamia, macadamias. I put back. I think I put back like the larger container and took a smaller container, like pine nuts. <laughs> macadamias they tend to be some of the pricier um so i bought a lot less and just kind of mixed them in and my little mix that i mean i'll buy them all individually and then i mix them together put them in ziploc bags and then eat you know eat out of those bags as i want some i'll pour some in a cup or take some throw them in my briefcase or whatever i i, I like you know tree nuts so you pretty much most of your travels been San Antonio, hasn't you? Haven't traveled out the Texas mostly, Arizona, yeah, mostly San Antonio, Houston, Dallas. So I haven't. So you did do some Houston. I haven't been on Dallas, a plane so. in in a while. You know, count yourself lucky in that respect. Last two freaking trips I've had back, I think back and forth South Texas. One wound up canceling the flight down to South Texas, had to stay at a freaking hotel and get up at 6 a.m. the next day or 5 a.m. and catch the flight in in the morning. And then on the return, on a, on a return flight, maybe this was from Florida, same. I didn't get canceled, but we got into Tucson like at 1.32 in the morning. It was ridiculous. Figured it was going to get canceled. So flying is ridiculous. Every flight that I book right now, literally I could make money on. I've thought about buying tickets and just – trade my seat out for flight credits because every flight I'm on, they're offering me a flight credit Hmm. and flights are up easy 40% price wise. Cause a lot of these trips I'm taking are places I've gone before 40% up just booked my flight to DC for, uh, you know, Washington public policy conference. And yeah, it's up easily 40% from what I'd paid in years past or what I was familiar with. Um, hotels are insane restaurants are packed so here's my whole point of this diatribe it is there inflation and there are people starting to make decisions putting the nuts back starting to trade down from beef so my whole thing is is it's just now beginning right now everybody wanted they get head money in their pocket they freaking been locked up for two years they're making their moves they're going out people are traveling so come october Dude, I think this thing's going to really change. I think come October, people start got to go back buy kids' clothes for school and got to, you know, and this inflation. I think the inflation impact is really going to settle in on us as we get into third and fourth quarter this year. And we're going to see things come to a major halt in terms of economically. Uh, and I also think that for the produce space and for you RPC guys moving produce through the system, I think it's actually going to be good for us. Because I think there will be a lot of people that will trade from some of those other energy sources, be it proteins, the steaks, that kind of stuff. They're going to trade down to the to the other stuff and uh, and maybe not quite as much processed stuff. And certainly, uh, I tend to think it'll be good for us, but unfortunately for the U.S. consumer and for everybody, I think it's going to be a rough uh, rough twelve to eighteen months once we get to October. Yeah, Mason, I've, as a I've young, heard, you better strap in, baby. Go ahead, Ed. I was just going to say, I've heard um, the egg industry is is enjoying an uptick. I think when you're talking about trade and protein, yep, um, eggs are a, a, a more, um, 
I guess cost effective. Uh, for sure. Means of protein. Then. Super high in protein and super yeah convenient. And then again, yeah, I, I can imagine even thought about eggs, but yeah, you can see that. So. But uh, yeah, just, we'll see how it goes, goes down by the end of October for my hunting trip because it uh, takes quite a bit of fuel to get from South Texas to Northwestern Colorado. Yeah, yeah I felt I it. Know. I felt it last year, and it wasn't where it is now. I mean, particularly, it was super windy the whole way up. I don't know what we were going through. Some storms at that point, um, just across the west, and then towing you know, to boot, it wasn't, it wasn't fun. Well, I, again, I can't, you know, my thought is uh, it, it all Ukrainian war thing and where that's at's going to have a bearing. At least you'll be through the summer driving. You might get a slight reprieve, but I wouldn't count too much because the demand for, for fossil fuels across every space and chemicals being a big one. I mean, the demand for, for fossil fuels, if you look at it, even before Ukraine, it was outstripping. That's why I say Bryce, is, Bryce has got a he's, – he's going to be in super high demand. Um, all you kids listening that need a job, go to the oil space because they, they – for the next couple of years, they're going to need it. So you might get a little bit of a reprieve, Ed, but I wouldn't count on being too great just because there's it's just – not going to be one ninety nine a gallon gas in October? I don't think so, but I don't think you're going to get that kind of adjustment. Just You just don't have it out there. It's just not – we underproduced. Uh, everybody, you know, Mason's generation was convinced that we were going to shut down the fossil fuel business in like 30 minutes. Apparently, that's not going to be the case. And well, uh, unfortunately, something has to – charge the electric cars something that, yeah and they have to use something to build them and and again i mean everything you do from plastics to fertilizer you know fossil fuels it drives everything you know so i mean we're all about let's don't burn up the damn planet but you know it's funny when the choice becomes people's pocketbooks are burning up the planet hell even the president of the united states is like you know what Maybe we'll add a couple of degrees to it, but we need some more dead gum oil. And so he's off to freaking Saudi Arabia. He's meeting with the freaking energy guys, the producers. It's like, hey, produce some more, you know. But you know what? There's not a lot of Bryce's out there, Ed. Bryce's is, is, is a unique, I mean, one, we're in an economic situation where there's too many job openings and too few people trying to go get a job. And then certainly, even though it pays big money, there's not a lot of people knocking down the door to go spend three weeks working 12 hours a day and getting blisters on their feet. There's not a lot of people who want to sign up for that program. So um, those guys, as much as everybody wants them to produce more and they were trying to produce more, it's just not physically possible right now. And uh, I think economically, like I say, for young folks, Mason, it's only seen wonderful rosy times. You guys better strap it in, baby. You, you're about to see some really uh, volatile times. There was there was 2008. They sure, the buddy. They didn't even let us have it. You know, and who knows? They probably won't let us go through this one. I mean, yeah, I, I think they may actually. The government may actually be in a situation where they can't afford to bail everybody out. Because you got to remember, 2008 was big banks, and so we can always bail out those guys this situation i think is going to be the u.s consumer this is going to be kind of the little guy pain government's not great about bailing you guys out so they 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 big companies they're, they're more than happy to bail out uh, when it comes to the man on the street look at that look at the late 70s just take a look at the late 70s you know I know, sad times. I don't want to be a doomsdayer. Don't want to bring the call down. But I'm just telling you, I've been think, I've been watching, and yeah, I know I am, Ed. But but you know what? With this call, this this con this conversation sometimes me about real stuff. So and I'm an old dude. Lived through some booms and bust. The '80s, the '90s, the dot com, 2008, dot com, or that was 2000s. You know, and uh, I'm telling you, stagflation is here. It's coming. Recession's coming. People in the streets. Famine. Worldwide global famine. Look for global famine. It's going to happen. 
It's going to be crazy. Stuff we're going to be talking about a year from now. You guys, it's going to be, yeah, food's going to be a big deal. Uh, just set itself up. There's there's not much way we can avoid it. So You're talking about me. Right. I, I don't know how, look, I don't know how scientific this is or not, but somebody put up a post that was, you know, in the ranching business and said, you know, think about the delay in impact in feed costs um, for the beef that's being, if you're a meat eater, for mm. the beef uh, calving season right now, for the beef that's being produced now, um, and then consequently fed until, you know, slaughter, slaughter um, yeah. is somewhat delayed, right? So the, um, I'm just not sure, you know, how accurate that is. Well, you, but you also have, so, so you got to think too, like in the beef, beef, beef's an example, you could go through different sectors, but, but in the beef business, I mean, you, you've been around and you know, the cattle business. So what, what ranchers will do, you know, so especially if you're a small rancher, you'll look at the prices that you've been getting paid in the last say 12 months. And then you'll take a look at the inflation cost and in, that, that have already here in the price of, of feed, right? Uh, or hay or whatever, right? Everything's escalated, right? And and you'll say, you know what? I am not going to take that risk based on what I've seen pricing, based on what historical is. So you know what? I'm selling all my cows, right? Or um, I'm going to reduce or, or, or whatever. I'm not going to put that risk out. You know, you you will, as a, as a farmer, as any kind of agriculture, you look at where you've been and you either limit or, you know, restrict your production, which that along with, you know, uh, the people that do stick in it, but you will reduce the amount of supply. Um, you will still have a decent level of demand. You always will have a level of demand for, for, you know, beef and protein. So it, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. What will wind up happening is you have enough people step out that prices will start to come back and, you know, get crazy expensive, um, trying to pay for it. So, Anyway. Yeah, and then right. you have environmental impacts, which are, for example, in Texas, struggling with water. A lot of discussion about water and drought. Um, well, same thing in the, in the produce space, right? Correct, and that's where I was going, is yeah. that, you know, that's definitely something we can't control. Cannot, and it's, uh, yeah, just, th th I look for a lot of, and for me, there's going to be a lot of changes, you know, globally across a lot of things, which that doesn't sound very, I mean, it, that's kind of, yeah, yeah, okay, but uh, not very, predict great, that's not great insight, I guess, maybe, but I will tell you, like, in the produce space, um, I do think you're going to have more and more stuff move south out of the country just because you can't, you can't, with regulations, with water, labor cost, everything. It's just getting impossible to produce uh, fresh produce um, cost effectively here and then price it into what, what's going on. Um, you know, with, with, you just can't price it at retail. It's getting crazy with, uh, even with inflation we've had. So I think you've got a lot of that. And um, that's just, that's kind of a reality, at least in my opinion, is, you know, what's been going will just continue to get accelerated just because it's getting crazy expense and you'll also see in the united states what will be the production that continues to grow is all the technology stuff these technology guys that are putting in all these you know they're going to have a hard time getting funded because all the money in the vc world's drying up because of the, the asset prices coming down so hard but um those guys that are that are running the automated facilities that's where you're going to see the u.s the u.s ag production is going to move to much more in-house automation that kind of stuff which you already see and and the stuff that's still relatively rudimentary requires a lot of labor um uh, and requires more water than normal that's going to move south and i'm not just talking mexico i'm talking guatemala honduras all those places so which already become big parts of of the global economy so all right look we're 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 pressing on time we, we've we, we've covered about 400 topics. This might be our most topic day that we've been able to punch in. But I, I've, I've got a quote. Did you get a quote today, Ed? 
I actually do. Okay. Uh, you want to go first? Sure. Mine's from Warren Buffett. Okay. Warren, and who's Warren Buffett? <laughs> um, he's a struggling <laughs> young up and comer in the financial <laughs> the, world. Um, Oracle from Omaha. For those of you, the Oracle from Omaha. You will lose a lot of friends when you get serious about your life goals. That's why the Lamborghini has two seats and a bus has 50. (laughs) Oh, man, I love that. Can you read that one more time? You will lose a lot of friends when you get serious about your life goals. That's why a Lamborghini has two seats and a bus has 50. Wow, that's kind of harsh. So, but I guess there's some, you, you, you buy that? I mean, obviously you wouldn't put that quote out to me and buy it. So. Yeah, I like it at least. So, yeah. Well, mine is from somebody you may have heard of, Teddy Roosevelt. Do what you can with what you have where you are. And I could continue on. Believe you can and you're halfway there. It is hard to fail, but it is worse to never have tried to succeed. So you can go with the short version, do what you can with what you have where you are, right? So don't don't look at your situation. I don't have this. I don't have that. Do what you can with what you have. And half the battle is believing, I believe you can and you're halfway there. It's hard to fail but it's worse never to have tried to succeed. That is so good, man. Love it. Mm Mm-hmm. Don't you? Yeah, that's good. So I'm ready to take on the rest of my day. He's the man of the day. Yeah. Yeah. So don't, don't, don't complain about damn inflation. Just do what you can with what you have. Make inflation work to your favor. Uh, Ed, did you have any what you're eating? Because I don't think I wasn't. I have what what, you're what I'm drinking, and that's H E B electrolyte water. I love it. Yeah, just started drinking it this week. So you have a, a pH a, a, range a, of six four to seven four is what I've been consuming. So it's an appreciable effect in your your how you feel. What's it changing? So. How, how do you know it? I, I'm not drink. I haven't been drinking enough water. So I'm not sure I'm ready to cut out the coffee altogether like you. Um, I didn't cut it all out. I said, just go to decaf, bro. I mean, it's good. Decaf's not bad. And and if you get the peats, they, they, the process is done with water versus all the chemicals. So hmm. anyway. To decaffeinate? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that's kind of always been my thing against the decaffeination of coffee is they, 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 the, the process that they use quite often is – is probably just as bad for you as drinking caffeine. I don't know. Do you find that it has a placebo effect? Because if if you think that that's a possibility, I might try it. What do you mean if I... Yeah, I mean, I, I again, you know how much of an addict I, I was on caffeine and coffee, right? Um, it's the one cup of caffeine, start off the day, and the rest decaf from that point forward. I swear. I mean, I, I I bled into it a little bit, right? I didn't just immediately go to that, but um, I don't. Yeah, I think it's just the whole taste and knowing that I'm drinking it. Now, I drink, I've had, sometimes I'll have some late day decafs. Uh, it's, I'll be honest with you, part of me kind of thinks like, I hope they're not trying to pull the wool. You know, I hope they're not saying, hey, this is decaf coffee and I'm still mm-hmm. drinking the shit out of caffeine, right? I mean, because I haven't noticed that much. So you're saying you that imagine? my five o'clock cup of coffee is not a good idea? You know, if you're concerned about sleep, there is nobody in the sleep business that would say that's good. Even the people, and you're talking about a guy that does not, I've never had a problem falling asleep right i still to this day don't have a problem i can fall asleep i'm if i'm five minutes in that bed and i'm not asleep it's unheard of and it doesn't matter if i drank coffee at 9 p.m so those people that i say is coffee doesn't affect me it's the same kind of deal as if you don't understand science and if you don't really look into stuff some things they're not they're not always obvious either physically or or like I say, even from falling asleep kind of stuff, but what's going on inside your body, what's happening, how it happens, how your brain keeps firing and stuff. You don't know about all that stuff. And so you may think it's not affecting you. And you're talking to a guy, but 
you know, part of the reason if you're not waking up rested, if you're not waking up feeling like a champ, it's very likely some of these things that you're putting in your body late in the evening that's causing it. And it may have nothing to do with how quickly you fall asleep or whatever. So, yes, now your five o'clock afternoon coffee with a with a half life on caffeine of at least twelve hours. You're you're basic. You're ginning, right? If you drink at five, you're ginning on caffeine until five a.m. the next day, at least. I mean, that's a half life. That's not the full. That's a half life. Hmm. So, it stays in your system a long ass time. All right. Eddie, anything else, buddy? Any more time good. stuff? You're good. You're a good man. You got a big week ahead of you. You look good. We're both um, I feel good. Shots. I was thinking about this morning. I think I've gained a couple pounds, so I'm rededicating myself and making it public so that to keep me honest. Okay. Um, what do you think's driving that weight gain? My shorts a little on the tight side this morning. Oh, you still, you you rock in the seventies running shorts, baby. Mm-hmm. I can say I can say yeah, that's that's your style, ain't it? Yeah. So, um, I think what's driving it, I'm not sure. I mean, I've been exercising, you know, watching what I eat. Maybe not enough. I'm just not burning enough calories. I'm going away from the. So I got on um, heavy whipping cream for my coffee um, because of the whole fasting thing. But I think I'm just going to have to drop that. I think it's enough, especially at, you know, probably three cups before I even eat Water. anything. Um, Water. I had tried um, fat-free half and half. I have to have cream in my coffee. So I think I'm going to go back to that and just... Get you a scoop of ghee. A scoop of ghee. Ghee? Ghee. It's okay. basically purified butter. I mean, you're, it, it's, but it, it, that actually supposedly a lot of people subscribe to how it, it's a really good brain fuel, right? So you get your scoop of ghee, um, and, uh, and it's, uh, changes the flavor of the coffee a little bit for sure, but it's got, a, it's not bad. I mean, if you like butter, taste of butter, but yeah, that's that, 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 really is what is it? it's mst mts it's some something that's in butter and oils and the fat that's there really get your brain firing in the morning so yep hmm. like, you know a lot of people use just regular butter you can use that too don't i mean we're not talking margarine we're not talking freaking that faco stuff you can either use straight up butter, but straight up butter has the cream in it and, you know, sugars, you know, for the keto crowd, for most people, you just want the oils, which is ghee, which is purified butter. That's what you want to use. So anyway, all right. Well, look, it's been so wonderful. It's good to see you guys. I feel, yeah, I know we had this pod a couple of weeks ago. That one seemed kind of. I don't know. It, 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 it seemed like we were forcing it. This one felt like <sighs> we're back. We're rocking. And we're going to Cali. We're going to Cali. We're Put back. You back on the stress. Yeah, we are back. Back in black. I hit the sack. Da, 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 da. All righty then. Said, Follow us on. <laughs> <laughs> so, you. oh, is it time to go? <laughs> Follow us it's on. Go. Go. Nah, take us I out of here. Remember. It's been so long. I, I can't even recall. Follow you don't us, follow the Fresh us? Cred on Instagram, Facebook, at CredFresh on Twitter, at the Fresh Cred on YouTube. Send us an email at the Fresh Cred at Gmail for comments, questions, concerns, likes, dislikes. Share, repost if you like what we're talking about. Um, yeah. Anyway, guys, it's a pleasure. Love you guys. Y'all take care, and uh, we will see you on the other side. Be safe. Everybody out there, be safe. Take care, and we'll catch y'all later. Take care. Bye.